Hey, 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 good morning, everyone. It's Monday, and it's a great week. We are doing training this week on worthiness. How many of you out there don't feel worthy of everything you receive? You are worthy of everything you receive. It's the first step in receiving what you want. Jake, Andrew, Samir, let's show everyone where to get us. There we go. Team David Meltzer is on top of it. Uh, if you want to join us on Fridays at 11 a.m., it's uh, david at dmeltzer.com. If you want to join my text community, it's 949-298-2905. Uh, the replay from all the trainings, the guides, the exercises, you can get at my email. The replays are on Spotify today. We had uh, amazing manifestation training, which is getting what you want training, how to get what you want training. If you didn't get your guide, your book, go ahead and email me, david at dmeltzer.com. Uh, let's get the questions rolling here. Kate, good morning. Caleb, good morning. Khan, good morning. Here we go. Best tips you have for parents. Four things. Well, you know, for me, your children come through you, not for you. Uh, make sure they're happy, number one. Healthy, number two. Love and appreciate you, number three. All right? So you show them and provide them the opportunity to be happy, healthy, love, and appreciation. Those are the four things. Make sure that they're learning, having fun, and doing their best. Those are the goals that I have for any ventures or activities that they have. It's I want them learning, I want them doing their best, and I want them having fun. Those are the only three things. Are they hustling? Are they learning? And are they enjoying it? And are they finding the light, the love, and the lessons in it? Good questions to start the day. All right. What's the hardest lesson for you to teach? The need not to be offended. Uh, <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a hard one. Any, any of the ego-based ones, accountability uh, is a very difficult one to teach. People love to go below the line. Student of their calendar is another very difficult one. Uh, receiving is another difficult one. There's so many that are difficult just because we can't stay consistent. Speaking of which, how to improve on your consistency. Lower the bar. Lower the bar till you can do it every day. Two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. Lower the bar. That will improve your consistency. Do things that you can do the rest of your life, not just for a week, not for, for a day, not just for a month. Do things that you can do the rest of your life. What's the best way to be rich? Make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. That's the best way to be rich. Create abundance in your life. Ask. What's the best lesson from manifestation training? The best lesson from the manifestation training is the possibility to probability to perspective idea that you have to look in. You can't find outside of you what you can't find within. And uh, that possibility needs to be found, turned in with inspiration to a probability, and then enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential with strategy, awareness, and <sighs> discipline. You can uh, make that probability your perspective or your reality. Uh, best lesson that uh, to learn. Were there any big lessons you focused on over the weekend? Yeah, audience, community. Never a better time to build a community. Uh, I have been narrowing down over the last six months. Uh, we will be, uh, our office closed uh, March 18th. So October 18th coming up will be six months. And we have expanded, accelerated, and grown, focusing on what's doing well right now, what's stable right now, and taking some lottery tickets on what's going to do well in the future. Uh, but we are getting very organized. I have found so much waste, also exposed uh, who's doing what, right? It's uh, very interesting, uh, just allowing me to track and reconcile and see who exactly is doing what, who's... You know, several people work in other jobs and other things. You just find out everything and just let it play out. So, uh, you know, e each their own will fall away. There's a, a variance involved in, in a bleeding chain uh, and allow that to happen. So people that feed you will be fed. People that don't in a variance, they will fall away. And people that bleed you will be fall away harshly or fired. Uh, that's my... Uh, six month plan and been effectuating very well for great progress. Hey Dave, how to find the right business partner? Um, have to look values, only values. You've got to find the right business partner by values. Make sure that you have things in writing so that uh, as things change and people change and uh, you can go ahead and make sure that it's codified for you. Um, 
and make sure that that you do that. Uh, but uh, I'm a big fan of um, not having a partnership. My dad told me three rules in partnerships: don't go into a partnership. Two, if you do, make sure your partner has more money than you. And three, if you don't listen to one or two, go back to number one. But if you do have a partnership and, and enjoy that, a lot of people can. It's uh, value based. Uh, for me, I'm past that in my career. I'm uh, building a brand and doing it with the community, not a partner. What's the best job to have if you're living in Israel temporarily? A remote job. Best job to have is one that you can learn to love what you do, that makes a lot of money, helps a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. Uh, Israel has extraordinary technology, so if you can work remotely from Israel with the time difference, you can do very, very, very well. Uh, Raul, welcome. Here we go. Your thoughts on day trading. Uh, first of all, day trading is about timing and risk tolerance. So know your own values, your timing and risk tolerance. Uh, know that uh, there are no shortcuts. You know, the thing about day trading is if you do something every single day, uh, you will get the statistical success that it comes along with. Karen, good to see you. I think we have a call today, a quick overview to catch up. Nice to see you. What's up, everyone? Keep these questions coming. These are great. Very, very good. Keep them coming. How can we elevate our awareness? Through vibration. Uh, for me, it's a frequency. So uh, if we can elevate our conscious, subconscious, and unconscious frequency, we can be aware of more things. And we do that by enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Practice, practice, practice. Find the light, the love, and the lessons. Clear away the interference between you and the source that you're connected to. Uh, so make sure that you do that. Uh, what do you do when you're feeling overwhelmed? Uh, stop, drop, and roll. Overwhelmed is a feeling of ego. Uh, being overwhelmed could be the need to feel separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, resentful, any of these guilty. These are all those feelings uh, that make you feel overwhelmed. Stop. Just stop. And then drop down, breathe, six deep breaths through your nose, out through your mouth. Then roll in the right trajectory from taking inventory of your values. Please share your thoughts about not giving up. Um, you know, the only way that you die is your heart stops. The only way you don't get to where you want to be or angling towards where you want to be is to not keep trying. Uh, you could be, my favorite poem is Don't Quick. Go ahead and Google it. it uh, you could almost be there and be there. Uh, to exponentiality of acceleration and growth, the way things double, you know, it's the very last, if you had a 20 year plan, it's the very last year you go from 50 to a hundred percent. It's the last two years that you go from 25 to 50 to a hundred percent. And that's why people quit. 99% of the people quit before they're 25% of the way there because they have an unmanageable expectation. They don't understand time acceleration and growth. Uh, they look at things in a linear methodology. So if I tell you it's 20 years, they think they should be halfway there in 10. No, you'll be happy there, halfway there in 19 years on a 20 year plan. Uh, and you might be ahead of or behind schedule, but most people quit. 99% of the people quit before they get to 25% of the way there. Another 99% quit before they get to 50% there. So you got 1% of the 1% that don't quit. And those usually are the extraordinary. Those are the people living in a different reality, one in which they create that they look within and get through. Great. Keep these questions coming, everyone. What are your tips of maximizing effective communication with others? <sighs> wow. You know, number one, the biggest con of communication is, oh, I thought you were busy. Uh, so the best tip is to pick which mode of communication uh, per, in person, on the phone, via email and media, radio, print, TV, social media, whatever it may be, and communicate. Prioritize the people you want to communicate with and just start doing it. So if you're not getting the results via email, then pick up the phone and call or go meet them in person or post it on the social, whatever it is, but keep communicating. The more you communicate, the better. How to sell to any clients. Uh, I'm actually creating a private sales coaching group in two weeks, I'm going starting to take names and numbers. So email me if you want to join the private group for sales. 949-298-2905 is the community uh, text. Or email me directly. We'll get you all the information. We're going to start in two weeks. Uh, private sales group. I'm going to train the five to thrive of how to stimulate interest, transition interest, share a vision, manage and develop a vision, and thrive. 
We're going to find the margins of millionaires. We're going to smile through the struggle, figure out where your capabilities, skills, knowledge, and desire lie within the context of a quantitative value. Teach you how to talk about those reasons, impacts, and capabilities in order to effectuate a sale. Let's make more money, help more people, and have more fun. Go ahead, email me, david at dmelzer.com, if you want to join my private sale group. Uh, No problem. Here we go. For For beginning meditators... Do you recommend guided meditation or just being quiet for a period of time? Whatever's best for you, right? Meditation is the practice of quieting. Obviously, for me, a guided meditation is much easier. Someone talking me through, a coach is much better. Uh, so uh, we're there. Um, how much is the sales group? It's fifty dollars a month or five hundred for the year, four ninety seven, uh, and it's completely guaranteed. I mitigate all risk and guarantee every single month. So impossible to lose. Uh, But go ahead, email me. And that's weekly access to me, my guides, books, exercises, and a private networking group for sales as well. And daily contact there as well. So can't beat it. Join it, please. Uh, Happy to help. A little COVID pricing for everyone. How do you help others change their perspective to find the light, love, and lessons in everything they do? Um, well, through four values to start, right? Gratitude uh, will help more than anything. If I can get them to practice gratitude, say thank you before they go to bed and when they wake up, and a variety of other gracious practices that you can do, doing good deeds, asking for help, and then forgiveness, uh, knowing that if we're going to expand and grow, that we're going to make mistakes uh, and we're going to have to forgive ourselves. 1111, I'm born on 111 at 111. 1111 is my number. And, uh, my boy Bob Guinea was married on 1111, 1111 wines, all kinds of great 1111s. Uh, but then forgiveness is so important uh, if we're going to expand and grow. Accountability will give us control of that perspective. It allows us to say, what did I do to attract it to myself? And what am I supposed to learn from it? And it will clear the interference, corrosion between the light, the love and the lessons in us. Uh, so gratitude, forgiveness, accountability. And the practice of information of clearing the connection to what we're already connected to and what we're connected to and with. How to empower others in business, help them make money, help them help people and help them have a positive perspective and have fun. Those are the three ways. Make money, help people have fun. Like I said, the same methodology I use with my kids is are you doing your best? Are you learning lessons? And are you having fun? You see it there? All right, let's bring on my first friend. Brian's here. And uh, let my friend in here. We've got the great Brian Breach, president of Psyche Company and the co owner of Get That Paper Sun Independent Label GTPS. There he is. Hey. What's up, David? How are you? I'm great, man. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. Oh, man. Well, you and I do so many things kind of synergistically and in the same type of perspective. And I just really admired what you're doing and wanted to kind of talk about some of the the better piece of advice that you have since you're on the cutting edge in our social space. So I thought maybe give a little bit of background of GTPS and a little bit of advice if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I come from a I come from a crazy world. So so yeah, I, I started well, you'll off- fit in. You'll fit in if you're from a crazy world. You'll fit in. <laughs> You know, my my entrepreneurial mentality came from when I was a kid. I, I literally remember when I was a kid in camp making beaded bracelets and selling them. I remember going to the corner store and and buying twenty five yeah <laughs> buying twenty five cent airheads and flipping them for seventy five cents. Literally, when I came out my mother's womb, I was trying to sell baby to the other babies in the in the hospital. So I've always had the mentality. I was working since I was eleven years old. Um, I grew up in a very tumultuous household with a very abusive mom and a lot of crazy things going on. She was arrested and uh, she passed away of AIDS when I was 13. So my dad uh, uh, got custody of us, moved in with my stepmom, and she got sick really quick. And then he got sick shortly after. I lost a lot of family members. So as a teenager, I didn't have a lot of guidance growing up. So I, you know, what happens when you don't have a lot of guidance? You get inside the independent mindset very quick. You figure out ways to make money very quickly. And I started working at the age of 11. Um, I mean, when I was 21 years old, I was running a telemarketing agency with 50 employees underneath me. And my last nine to five came around 2004 to 2008. But in 2006, I got arrested a couple of times like an idiot. And that basically, you know, I don't want to say ruined my life because it helped me in the long run, but it screwed me over in 2008 when I was fired from my last nine to five. 
I literally couldn't get a job anywhere. So when you can't even get a job at McDonald's, what do you do? You become a certified entrepreneur. And we started throwing hip hop shows. I was an artist for a long time, which is what got me verified on Instagram in the first place. Um, I started independent label. We started a hip hop blog, which at the end of its tenure got like 2 million or some, some odd views. Uh, we started a studio, a printing business, a social media business, and it was failure at their failure at their failure. But within each failure, I, I had some kind of little win and I learned and I learned and I learned. And it was just one thing after another. Then I quit music in 2017, long story short, and I pivoted. I didn't want to lose my following. So I started shooting skits and pranks, social experiments. And about five months into it, I was given the opportunity to do a TED talk. And at the end of the year, after writing on a whiteboard saying, you're going to go viral or you're going to leave this comedy world like you left the music world. Something I shot went viral and the combination of the TED talk and the thing I shot went viral just kind of blew me up in the last couple of years. And I've been speaking around the country. I still have my social media business that's been booming. Um, I've gotten opportunities to speak to people like you and amazing podcasts, Bradley and TV shows and movies and all kinds of stuff. And now I'm the social director, uh, the, the social media director for the movie studio. So that is the very, very long story in a tiny little nutshell, but it's been a long, crazy journey, man. You know, what's so interesting is everybody makes mistakes and, you know, it, it, when you illuminate them, you know, at first you think it's the, e the end, right? And that puts your back against the wall, but right. there's a freedom that comes by having that back against the wall you, to actually say, you know what? I know all these years since you were 11, all the lessons that you learned since you were 11 about how to build a business. And you learned a lot of lessons and it doesn't mean you knew everything. You made some mistakes, but it's that moment that, putting your back against the wall and creating a trajectory saying, you know what, I'm fine where I am. I'm going to angle to something better, but there's one component that's a variable that everyone has. And it's, you have this faith, no matter all that shit that happened to you, family, arrests, all the things that other people blame on, on why they can't be there and why they're a victim. You just made it your story. What do you think it is that gave you that faith, that perspective that I'm going to make this my story? I'm not going to be a victim. You know, what I realized in this life is that life comes at you hard and it comes at you fast, man. There's no stopping it. And when you've been through so much negative, what's left? There's positive left. When your back is against the wall and someone's coming to attack you, you, don't, you, don't, you can't go backwards. You can't fight backwards. The only thing you could do is fight forward. There's no other option. So I always put that in my head. I mean... I can either sit there and cry in my bedroom every night and complain about what I went through and my mom and all the family members passing away, or I can make the best life, it, you know, which they wanted me to make. I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. So you have to fight forward. You have to move forward. Not only that, you, I have this like hunger within me. It's just always there. And the days that I do lose motivation, which, you know, we all, we all lose motivation. There are days that we don't want to wake up, but so I strategically place things around my house and in my eye line, my vision, what I listen to, my movies to motivate me on a consistent basis. So, I mean, some of the posters in the background, but on this wall, I have a think wall. I have all these amazing figures on the wall that every day I wake up and I see it. Even when I'm in the bathroom, using the bathroom right in front of me on the wall, it says, don't forget to go after your dreams or, or go after your goals. So I'm constantly reminding myself through the whiteboards in my room, in my own bedroom, I have seven whiteboards scattered around my bedroom, not, not, my, not just my office, in my bedroom. So the minute I wake up, I look around and it's like, whiteboard, what do you got to do? What do you got to do? Motivation, uh, um, something that says uh, you can't deposit excuses, uh, your tank is on empty. I have them all around my house. So the minute I wake up, I'm being bombarded with motivation, what I need to do, motivation. So those are ways that I keep moving forward and I keep reminding myself why I started in the first place. Because we usually forget why we start. There are so many times that I started a business and I'm like, I'm doing this because I want to make a better life for my nephew. I want to get this car. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then six months later, I'm like, wait, why, why am I going? Why am I going so hard at doing this again? And then I have to check myself and remember all those things in the beginning. So I write it down. I write the list of why I'm doing this and what my reasons are so I do not forget it. And that propels me forward like a, like a, like a steam train, you know? Yeah, you know what else is awesome is you talk about, like, I couldn't even get a job at McDonald's. And there's been several times in my life that I look back on, but, you know, something I wanted even more than a job at McDonald's, you know, and I didn't get the job I wanted. I didn't get in the college I wanted. I didn't get in the law school I wanted. And 
you know, this is what really motivates me is that every time I don't get what I want, it seems I end up somewhere better. If I have that perspective that you do. And like, I'm listening to you going, thank God they didn't give him a job at McDonald's because he would have surrounded himself with a lower frequency, wasting his time. You know, there's so many people who live their life as a tube, right? And, and, and I'm not saying McDonald's is a bad place to work. It, it educates more of our young people on how to do business. And right. it, it's a good paying job. But for where you were at in your life, right? You don't oh. want to take that step back. That's a step up to, 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 to make it. But people live their lives as tubes. They immediately, when things go bad, they're like, oh, I just got to feed this tube and let it come out. That's all they care about, right? Just living their life as a, a tube. And right. yet, if you would have gotten that job, you know, or, or a job like that, it would have destroyed you. And instead, you have this great perspective of, you know what? I'm going to angle myself to something better. I have skills. And you went right to your skills. You have knowledge of what and who. And then you just went at it. And when you got down, Right, you use motivation to get back up, get up, get back up, get started, get restarted. And yet, one last thing as we go, I want to get into it's one thing to get motivated by those quotes. It's another, you know, to have a down day, etc. But inspiration is that lifetime journey that you have, understanding that you're connected to something so powerful, these lessons, this love, this light that's in there. How do you get focused every day? Because it's one of the most common questions I get. People say, how are you motivated every day? I say, I'm not motivated every day. I'm inspired every day. What's that inspiration to you? You know, through my journey, you know, don't get me wrong. I want it all. You know, I want to take over the world and I want it all. And, and you know, I want to keep going hard. And, and you know, it's, it's, not, it's not about being selfish. I know me personally. I know how I am. I, I'm a giving person. And my inspiration comes from, in my head, the further I go, the more I'm able to help people. So I already have it in my head. The minute I'm set up and I got things going this way, I'm going to go help this guy. I'm going to send out more inspiration. So I, I want to be inspired so I can inspire others. I, I always think about, you know, the day. I always think about, like, my death. I know it sounds weird, but I think about, like, the day I leave this earth. What am I going to leave behind? And I, I was telling this to my nephew the other day, not just necessarily money, but he's like, well, people aren't going to remember you in 200 years. He's starting to get really philosophical. And I'm like, it you know, let your name live on through other people. What you do and how you inspire others is what's going to inspire you. So when you're consistently inspiring someone, let's say I send out a couple of, or somebody writes me, asks me a question in my DM, you know, I'm going through a hard time. How do I handle it? And instead of ignoring that person, I take five minutes of my time I inspire them. I try to guide them in the right direction for the rest of their life. They're going to remember Brian Breach as uh, the guy who inspired me, the guy who changed the trajectory of my life. And I know it sounds funny, your legacy, I guess, but your name kind of lives on through that person. Even if they don't say it outright, it's in, it's in their mind that they know that Brian Breach was the guy or David was the guy who inspired them and changed the trajectory of their life. So I, I find inspiration personally through inspiring others, knowing that my name will live on for a positive reason, not because I went viral over, you know, me throwing up on someone's lawn, being drunk at a party, you know? So yeah. that, that's what keeps my flame burning inside. Yeah, the ability to elevate others, to elevate yeah. yourself. And I love the fact that, you know, you can't find outside of you what you can't find inside. And you definitely have that introspective look. What's the last piece of advice you got for us before we let you go? We got to do this more often, my friend. I'm so proud of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for reaching yeah. out. Absolutely. I, I would say this, you know, I learned a lot when I was younger, what I, what I learned ton and which I would, I wish I would have known, you know, I wish I would have known back then was get rid of all your time wasters. I spent more time, I spent more time going to clubs, chasing girls, doing things. And as, as the days go by and as I do it again and again, I get that small instant gratification that I went out and I did this and I partied or, or I hung out with this girl, or that girl, and so on and so forth. And I realized that most of it is such a waste of time that you could be building the foundation of your life instead of sitting there doing things that are massive time wasters, like hanging around with the same friends, talking about the same old stuff every single day, drinking the beer, doing nothing. So get rid of those time wasters in life. And I promise you, you will realize how much time you have to focus on your goals. I agree. There's so much time, energy, and emotion that we can utilize that we waste on ego-based consciousness, with that, those needs, right? And it's right. interesting whether it's people or things that we're doing. You know, I talk about the variants of people that bleed you. And we, we, if it bleeds you, you got to fire it from your life. You know, right. it, those that don't feed you, you can let those fall away from your life. But right. those that feed you, the things that feed you, 
that's what you're starting to focus in on. And that's what you've been able to do, Brian. And keep it up. Keep inspiring others. Inspire others. We'll do this again. Thank you so much, my friend. Take care. Thank you, David. Have a great day. I appreciate you. You too. Right on. Brian Breach. Check him out at Brian Breach. Hey, Hugo, I see you on there, my friend. I have not seen you in a while. Uh, if you haven't checked out Modi, M-O-T-I, check out Hugo at Modi. It's uh, an unbelievable way to interact and to monetize. It's a profit center. That means you make money from it. Uh, great friend of mine uh, sit on the advisory board for uh, Modi, M-O-T-I, and Hugo's an extraordinary entrepreneur. Also one person who illuminates that there she is. She's ready for me. We're going to go live uh, with Colleen. Another Colleen. Colleen, here we go. Colleen. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Am I getting you before or, or after your workout? Before. Before? <laughs> I don't look this nice after. I was going to say. <laughs> I don't ever look that nice. So you, I'm, I'm after my workout. <laughs> but well, anyway. happy, happy Miles Monday. I, my Miles Monday, he. So I I'm love kind of. I love Miles' name. Being a runner, I'm like, that's such a cool name. <laughs> it's so good. He's gonna. We're gonna do an afternoon edition today because oh. typical dad. He had school. He actually got to go to school today. Oh, good. And for so him. I was like, hey man, we gotta jump on. He's like, oh no, I gotta go to school. I was like, oh shoot. So we're gonna do an afternoon. I think I might move it to Miles Sunday. We'll see what he does. Oh, there you go, Miles Sunday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like oh, that. Well, I'm glad that school started again. But I have. Uh, done a lot of research on you and I was so impressed with what you've been able to do in your journey. I talk about being happy where you are, uh, mm -hmm. knowing that you're at the right place at the perfect time, but angling some towards something better and having faith, you're going to end up somewhere better than that. Yeah. I think your story and your journey is iconic when it comes to someone who's very happy where they're at and know they're at the right place at the perfect time. You are always trying to grow and accelerate and angle to something better. But you had faith that in, you know, third place at the Olympics in 2016 is yeah. probably not where you imagined yourself to be in 2000. So I was hoping maybe give us a little bit of that journey of being in the right place, but angling to something better and having faith that you'll be somewhere better than that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I know you talk a lot about, um, oh, now I'm going to blank on the word. Um, when you're trying to, you said it's a woo-woo word. For manifestation. Trying, manifestation. Thank you. Yeah. And I feel like I was, I almost get jealous of people who have such a clear vision of what they want and then they have to manifest it. I think for me, it's been more like, huh, like that seems interesting or like a door opens and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting opportunity that I hadn't really imagined for myself. And then I'm like, all right, well, like, let's explore that and see where it goes. And that's kind of been where, you know, where my journey as a professional athlete has taken me. I never imagined myself as an Olympian. I wasn't a little kid saying like, I want to be an Olympian. I have to manifest that for myself. I was just, you know, I was dancing and I was playing soccer and I was just enjoying that. And then running came along and I was like, oh, okay. Like, I'm kind of good at that. Like, I'm going to keep working at that. And then eventually got it. Yeah. Got a scholarship. And then the opportunity came up to even train for the Olympics. And so I was like, okay. Um, and it's just kind of taken me on this, you know, journey that way. But I've always been trying to stay open to the next possibility, the next opportunity, and then kind of um, committing myself to, to that once I made that decision. You know, for you, like uh, group activity seemed to be the what that allowed you to keep your options open. Yeah. And like for me, I always say my blessing was that I was so money hungry when I was little <laughs> that it kept all my options open because I was constantly looking, you know, like you probably were like, oh, I'll try swimming, I'll, I'll try soccer, you know, yeah. this is, but you were a type of person, if you're going to do it, you're doing it 100%, yeah. right? Someone like you doesn't just go to hang out, but totally. the money to me was the same way. It was like, okay, I'm going to look at th this. Okay, I'm going to be a doctor because they make a lot. No, no, <laughs> a lawyer because they make a lot of money. No, the <laughs> internet, that's going to make a lot of money. But it, it literally because I had some sort of point of direction, this idea of angling yeah. somewhere that was taking me that I wasn't just sitting around. And it's that common denominator that you definitely have within you, which is no matter where you went or option you took, you just wanted to be the best you could be. In other words, there's this common denominator that I must be what I can be. And sometimes we're in a quantum area that we're not gonna be very good at. Like for me, 
unlike you, you know, my athletic career, I realized I'm quantumly not as fast as you or as good at <laughs> athletics as you. I was an average division three football player, but I gave it my all. Yeah. I gave it my all. If you I have had to Apollo see where the maximum is, like where can I, how far can I possibly take this? Right. Where's Otherwise, my you're always going to be wondering what if, like, what if I had tried? What if I had gone right. another step further? What if I just dedicated myself a little bit more? That's the last thing I ever want to think and about. That's, the, that's what people need to know. I know Apollo Ono, for example, one of the greatest Olympians of all time. You know, I was joking with him. He's a friend of mine. And I was like, oh, cool. you don't realize because he, he was so engulfed in skating. Right. Yeah. Which, to me, speed skating is the most tragic of all uh, Olympic events because I, I, I mean, literally, you can lose your gold medal by, by the size of my, I always told Apollo, I, I probably, if I was as fast as him, I would have beat him because my nose is so long. I would have, bam, I win. Because that's literally the length of like- It's the same thing in like the 100, the men's 100 for track and field. You're like, boom, 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 boom. There's first and fourth, just like that. And yeah, it's over. It, and if you didn't have, if you didn't have like the best day, well, now you have to wait four more years to try again. Right, one little slip somewhere, like one millisecond. It's, re it's, it's so lot. ridiculous. It's but yeah, like I tried as hard as he tried. Uh, he was just quantumly better and I, yeah. in certain things in my life. And he was the, uh, the litmus test for me when I knew what he did to become Apollo Ono. I hold myself up to that going, am I, am I focused like that? Am I consistent yeah. like that? Am, do I care enough? Because if I don't, I'm going to move on to something else like you that I want to care about because yeah. I'm not going to waste my energy uh, on th those type of areas. So how do you balance that though? One of the difficult, I'm 52 years old and I've got yeah. weighted balance, but I was curious how you balance in your life that it desire is. with the rest of your life. Yeah, it is a crazy balance. And it's funny that you brought up Paul Ono because he was featured in that film Weight of Gold. I'm sure you've seen it, but if you're, um, viewers haven't seen it, they should. It's on HBO, I believe. Um, and it's all about Olympic athletes, the weight of gold, of, of like winning gold or not winning gold at the Olympics, and just the mental health ramifications that um, Olympic athletes go through with these four-year cycles um, and having their whole self-worth and their whole lives centered around this thing. And then when it's over, even if it went well or didn't go well, when it's over, you just feel like, empty like what do i do now and who am i now that this is over and what's like what's next and so the film talked about um you know just how many olympic athletes end up committing suicide because they feel empty and they feel lost and and afterwards they don't know who they are without their sport um so it's definitely a good watch and and um and amazing just lessons and stories in there but um, so I think for me, uh, I do have more than just my sport. And I think I've always been that way where I always have seen myself as like uninterrupted says more than an athlete um, and more than a runner. And, you know, I have all these other interests and values and um, just who I am as a whole human being matters to me and the way that I give back to um, those who follow me or, you know, those who um, are cheering me on, watching everything that I do. Uh, like little hawks <laughs> and so that that really gives me a sense of purpose and um and joy and happiness too and not you know i've i have more of a sense of self outside of what i do on the track which i think is really important just for my overall health and happiness um but it also ends up helping me in my performance too when i have a greater purpose more than just winning the gold just to have the medal you know, when I feel like I have people who, for like, for example, I have a hashtag on Instagram about braids. And so I braid my hair all the time. And then um, I post about it on Fridays using hashtag Fast Braid Friday. And all kinds of women and girls, and sometimes even guys, get in there with their braids. And they'll post pictures of themselves in braids and using the hashtag and tagging me and stuff. Um, and so it's this community where, you know, you braid up your hair before you do something really challenging, before you take on a really hard workout or do something that's going to be really, uh, really tough for you. And so you need some extra confidence. You need some extra, like, I got this. I got my hair braided. I stand my shoulders back. Like, let's go. Um, I love that. And so I've created this. There's this community around braids now. And it's very kind of this inspirational. I braided my hair and then I ran a PR in the 5k or 
ran my first marathon or whatever it is. Um, and so that gives me extra purpose too, that when I'm sitting on the starting line with my hair braided, I'm not only thinking about me and what I want to do, but I'm thinking about all those with braids who are watching me to, you know, be a leader for them and be inspiration for them. So I think, yeah, being more than an athlete, being more than just getting the medals for the sake of getting the medals is something that helps my mental health for sure. And, and it just motivates me more than simply performance ever really could. Yeah, and you've really been able to find your own frequency. And I've been branding athletes before you were born. That's how old I am. But as a model, <laughs> as an athlete, you know, that frequency is truly important, more important than ever today. When, you know, I talk about the pimple popper lady, you know, ironically, she has more subscribers on YouTube than the entire Pro Football Hall of Fame because she, knows her, she knows her frequency, like braids, <laughs> right? Like, I, I would love to join your braid thing, but <laughs> yeah, we're, we're having problems here. Um, I, you know, I have three daughters, so they always wanted to braid my hair, but not a chance. Um, <laughs> but last thing real quick, because I am also, I love food. Uh, yes. I think it's an expression of genius. It's an expression of love. It makes everybody feel good, just like happiness. The person who cooks it, serves it, eats it, it witnesses it. It's a, it amazing. So uh, I know you're an extraordinary chef. I'd love to know yes. what's your favorite thing to cook and, and recipe what, and why? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, my alter ego is Chef Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> so I do love cooking. I went to Florida State. Um, actually, I'm holding my Florida State water. Oh, by the <laughs> way, Myron, do you know who Myron Roll is? Yeah, of course. So Myron was on, so Myron was my client. No and, way. Yeah, one of my favorite clients ever. And Star he used to say, he, he's so serious. He won the World Scholar, by the way. Myron Roll right. won the World Scholar, got drafted. Uh, played in the league for a tiny bit. He is now at Harvard doing his residency in neuro, uh, yeah. whatever. But he was on CNN talking about the president this weekend. He was a consultant. I was I so proud. Of, I was so proud of him. But he used to, he was like uh, literally just graduated at 21 because he graduated in three years. Yeah. And we went to London together go, to hook him up at Oxford. And he would say, uh, query, Mr. Meltzer, query. And like, he, I'm like, who are you? I've never imagined I'd have a football client like it's smarter than any of my siblings so who also smart. were like summa cum laude at Harvard. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I, I digress. But I had to tell you, I'm a Myron Wolf super fan no, no. and friend. I all, love all that. The That's really cool. Yeah, all his siblings are M's. They're like my girls. They're all M and M's. So my, they're perfect. Anyway, go ahead. So you That's have the awesome. FSU. I don't know him personally, but I wish I did. So we might have to make. I'll the, make the intro. I'll make the <laughs> intro. <laughs> He's Adonis. He's amazing. I tried That's to adopt awesome. him too. I tried to adopt him. I go, you know, Rhodes Scholar, NFL superstar, 6'2", 195. We need those jeans. Uh, it was before Miles. I'd adopt that kid and Miles would never be here. <laughs> I love it. Anyway. Well, I, I studied, I'm not nearly uh, on Myron's level, but I studied dietetics at Florida State, uh, which is like nutrition and food science. Um, and I definitely just am into food and how food fuels my body and makes me feel, you know, I'm better at my sport and I can recover better and I can run faster and, and perform better because of how I fuel my body. Like, I know that that is just a big part of the game and my success and everything, but it's also just such an enjoyable experience and it really should be you know, a place where you, you, you know, maybe spend 30 or 45 minutes or even an hour in the kitchen preparing this, you know, meal. And then you sit down with people who you love, who you have good conversations with, and you can enjoy it and eat it together. And, you know, there's no TVs involved or anything. Um, and that's kind of, I don't know, that's really something that's always been special to me, even growing up and uh, with my family and, and something we still do now. So, um, food is definitely very important. Cooking is very important and just making food that nourishes me and stuff. All that being said, I think my favorite recipe that I would love to share with people is, um, it's a pasta recipe that my dad used to make for us when we were growing up as kids. We would have it instead of like, as like the way that most kids have macaroni and cheese. My dad would make this pasta recipe for us because it's super simple. It takes like 10 minutes to make. And, but it's healthy, it has way more nutritious value than, 
you know, than your standard box macaroni and cheese. <laughs> that was a big thing for my family was we had a big uh, garden in the yard and we had fresh eggs. We had chickens and oh, wow. eggs. Did, you, did you give it a name? Does the pasta have a name? Did you name it? Yeah, so it's, it's called yogurt fettuccine. And it's because it's like an Alfredo sauce, but it's made with yogurt, plain yogurt and Parmesan cheese. And so it doesn't have like a heavy cream or anything in it, um, but it has some extra protein from the yogurt. And it, it does end up being really creamy um, and delicious. And then Parmesan cheese is like a lower fat, um, drier cheese. So it's delicious. The recipe is on my website, which is ColleenQuigley.org. Um, and all the recipes you could do, ColleenQuigley.org slash dinner, if you want to get to the straight to the recipes. Um, I also have a newsletter on there you can sign up for, subscribe to at the top for free if you want all kinds of other recipes and workouts and all that kind of good stuff. It is an amazing site. I've been there and also at <laughs> Steve underscore Squigs. They can reach you on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, my last training last Friday was on Manifestation. Uh, it'll be I featured on Spotify today. So if you want to see the replay, you can go there as well. And this week's on worthiness, how to be oh, worthy cool. for everything you receive. And you are absolutely worthy of everything you're receiving. And I can't wait to see what else you have in store for us come the future. Please join me again, Colleen. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope to be back. Have yeah, a great absolutely. week, everybody. Thank you. She's <laughs> amazing. Join the hashtag braid club too, if you have longer hair than me. Uh, Way to Gold was the name of the movie. I saw that in the notes. Uh, we'll go ahead and post up uh, Colleen's uh, Instagram and the website. It's a really, really cool website. Obviously, she's super cool. One of the Renaissance women of the world, really doing it athletically, physically, emotionally, spiritually, economically. She knows what she's doing and we can learn from her. Elevate others to elevate yourself. Colleen Quigley. Uh, awesome. Anyway, let's take one more question. Friday's trainings on worthiness. I'm going to teach you how to feel worthy of everything you receive so you can receive more. If you have trouble receiving, if you don't feel worthy, separate, lonely, please come to training. If you miss it, just go ahead and email me uh, to join. Or if you miss it, david at dmelter.com. Join my text community, 949-298-2905. Uh, and free exercises, guides, my book for free. If you missed any of the trainings from ego training to sales training to pitch training, we got our new show, Two Minute Drill on Bloomberg coming out. We're going to be filming that over the next three months. Please give us a, a jump there at david at I'm going to take one more question um, and uh, we'll, we'll grab this here. As a 21 year old, I should go for an MBA or start working. How about both? How about both? <laughs> Get your MBA and work uh push yourself right we can be what we can be we must be what we can be let's make it happen thank you uh join on the podcast the playbook for the replays so just think about the words how and both and yes how both and yes use how both and yes and you will get what you want rapidly and accurately think about how can i do it i can do both and yes, 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 I can do it. I'm worthy of everything I receive. All right, everyone, I'll be back this afternoon for a Miles Graham special edition of Live with my son, Miles. We'll do a little Monday night uh, football replay, Sunday replay, whatever he has in store for us. Please join us this afternoon after school, whatever time that may be, probably around uh, before my three o'clock private groups. Uh, private group sales, uh, I'm going to start a private sales group. Go, go ahead. Jump on david at dmelzer.com. Join my text community, 949-298-2905. Go to Spotify, Entrepreneur. The playbook is featured with all the replays of all the training. I think you've heard enough. And remember, most importantly, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Colleen. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. I'll see you later today.